Hello, welcome to this talk called Blue Hound Pet Destroyer, Life and Death of a Tool. My name is Mathieu Saunier. I'm a Senior Manager Incident Response at Syntax System. We are, we are a managed ERP provider and we also offer some security services for our client. Previously, I was Adversary Detection and Threat Hunting Team Lead at a major telco here in Canada. Um, I love giving talks and I had the pleasure to do so at Derbycon, NordSec, Defcon Blue Team Village, Sector, and a few B-sides. You might have noticed right now that, uh, or already I should say, that English is not my first language, so please bear with me if I make small mistakes. Um, you can find me on Twitter at ScoobyMTL. Now let's go over the agenda for today. We're going to go over an introduction of the tool that changed my life. Uh, then we're going to talk about running the tool for the first time. After that, running the tool for a second time. After that, we're going to talk about turning the hound blue. Uh, after that, there's a chapter about five friends that push you to surpass yourself. And finally, we're going to talk about fusion of like-minded tools. Without further ado, let's jump into the core of the subject, Bloodhound, a tool that literally changed my life. I will take you back in 2017. Here I was sitting at the Mandalay Bay in a talk called The Industrial Revolution of Lateral Movement by Tal Berry and Tal Mahar. If you haven't seen that talk, I highly recommend it. And here's a link for it. So there I was watching this talk where these two guys present their tool that they've built uh, that is aptly called GoFetch that, that um, automate the attack of pads found, attack pads found in Bloodhound. So it's a combination of PS exec script and uh, mini cats, and it jumps from server to server and it grabs the credential and bring them back to you and do the lateral movement for you. It looked so easy. I was like, wow, this tool is amazing. And the combination of those two tools is something uh, close to like very almost diabolic. Uh, I started asking my friend at DEF CON and Black Hat if they knew about this awesome tool, Bloodhound, and I was quite surprised that everybody but me actually have heard, had heard of that tool that was released a year before. Um, I decided when I came back to my corporation that we should run that tool. Um, I, I set up and I started having meetings with the IT department, with the Active Directory security team, with the global security team. I was working at the SOC at the time in that corporation. And uh, it, I wanted to, to test two things, basically. I wanted to know if we had easy paths uh, from users to domain admin. And I also wanted to know and make sure that we had detection for the tool. So here I was about six months into trying to talk with people to let me actually run that tool. But as you probably know, large enterprise don't like to take risk and it just uh, dragged and dragged and dragged. And at some point I just said, hey, you know what? I'm the sock. If there's any alerts, they'll come to me, they'll come to my team and my team will say, hey Matt, what have you done? And I'll just tell them, well, I ran a tool. Uh, great that we have some detection and here's maybe a playbook that we need to apply if ever we catch someone doing that again. That is not me. Um, so I, <clears throat> I decided I run the tool. Um, I started analyzing the result. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And I was quite surprised. The, I typed my name and I had a path to domain admin. And then I typed the name of a coworker. He also had a path to domain admin. Then I tried someone in another team. They had a path to domain admin, admin as well. And then I choose someone I knew from uh, another department, let's say HR or something similar. And that person also had a path to domain admin. And that's when I started really thinking that this, is, this was weird. So I started digging and using a bit more of custom cipher queries. And I noticed that the group domain user, so the group that encompassed all of the user in Active Directory, actually add a path to domain admin. Not only that, domain user was actually uh, admin of one server. Uh, I believe that the administrator of that 
server that was not an IT person wanted his own team to be able to RDP on that system and that's why he just put uh, domain user as administrator of the machine. This way everybody could actually RDP in his machine. Problem solved or maybe so he thought. So I built my thing, uh, I built my nice report, I was extremely proud and I sent that to corporate security or the global security team actually. And oh my, did they saw me? They saw me all right. So I was uh, a few hours after I, I sent the report, I got a call from uh, the director of that group, of the security group, the global uh, security group. And he told me, Matt, it's a good thing that you send that report because we actually thought you went Snowden on us and you were trying to hack us. Turned out that DLP of all the system that we had in the corporation is the one that caught me. There was tens of thousands of uh, logins failure of me trying to reach all of the systems in the corporation. Um, so yeah, that was, a, that was a good learning curve and I knew that at least that we had some detection now uh, for a bloodhound. Comes 2018. Strong from my um, experience of uh, running Bloodhound in, um, in my corporation and thinking of that talk, uh, the lateral movement, the industrial <laughs> revolution, sorry, uh, of lateral movement that I was talking about, I decided to submit a talk that would be called How I Hack My Domain, uh, How I Became Domain Admin in Two Clicks. Um, and I thought it would be so easy to build. And that talk was accepted here in Montreal in a local conference. Turns out exploiting Windows is not that easy. I had a lot of problem running all the tools that I wanted. And finally, I changed my talk a little bit instead of being uh, solely about that, um, that tool in Vogue GoFetch. It was actually about how you can perform uh, a full it's so a full chain of sending a PDF, infecting someone, and all the ways that you can actually detect them using open source tool. I ended up giving that talk two times, uh, but it was never recorded. And I spent most of my time uh, on the Black Hat and DEF CON the following year to actually build that talk. And I actually bumped into Benjamin Del P, the guy who wrote Minicat. And I was like, can you help me? I, I'm trying to run things. I'm trying to make a demo and I, I cannot run it. And he told me two very interesting things. First, if you're able to run Mimikatz, it means you're admin of the machine. That means that you can disable security software. Interesting. And then second point is you should not just take the Mimikatz off the shelf. You should customize it for what you actually need. Um, so that was pretty interesting. Come 2019, and now I had two ideas for talk. Uh, I thought about a methodology for turning the hound in blue, so blood hound from red to blue, and also a talk uh, about how you can start using uh, the attack framework in a song. And guess what? Both talk were actually accepted, and both con were about uh, 30 days apart. So I felt like a huge imposter syndrome uh, because those were a bigger conference as well and uh, i remember going out to a wine tasting one night and coming out of the subway and i started sweating i was like why did i what did i get myself into and it's just like <sighs> overwhelming um finally my wife helped me she took a bit more care of the kids uh, giving me a bit more time during the evenings and during the weekends and i managed to give those talks and i actually ended up giving them at least three times each here in Canada, but also in the United States. And I've met a lot of people uh, giving those talks. Now, this is what most people see when they run Bloodhound for the first time. This is actually the second pre-built query in Bloodhound called find shortest path to domain admin. You have to understand that this is by no means all the path that actually exists in your environment. They are, as the name implies, the shortest path to domain admin. 
But keep that uh, in mind when we're gonna go through some example and we're gonna talk about going through the paths. So I'm talking about going through each of the lines that you're actually seeing here. So this is another way that is more representative of what we just saw. So this is the city of Toronto and the starting point is the airport and the destination is the CN Tower, which is a known landmark in Toronto. So if I want to go from the airport to the CN Tower, Google offers me three different routes that have very similar kilometers or distance, if you will. But as you can see on the map, these are by no means the only way that I can get from the airport to the CN Tower. I could use this road, which is not much longer, but apparently uh, not, well, the distance is not much longer, but the time is longer. I could also make a detour and go see some friend in Park Woods, for example, or I can go all the way to that other town there. And you get the picture, any combination of streets, I can turn left, I can turn right, I can come again. And I, you know, I could go all the way to Montreal, which is, uh, I don't know, like 10 hours drives away and come back to the CN Tower if I was so inclined. So the TLDR of the talk blood down from red to blue is the following. Do not send your sysadmin on goose chases. Don't give them paths that if they remediate them or relationship between objects that if you remediate them, don't have any effect on the graph or on the quantity of attack paths that you have in your enterprise. So the idea behind that is take each of the path that we saw and delete the first relationship and test if the starting node still have a path to domain admin. If it has, add the relationship back and move to the second relationship, delete it until you find one relationship that actually breaks the path. When you're done with the first path, you go to the second path and you go like this. When you do that in a manual fashion, you will try to find the path that has the most user, so which has the greatest impact. Typically, uh, the paths with big groups such as domain user would be our first target. Now, as I mentioned, I gave that talk many times um, and I met a lot of extremely nice people. Among them were uh, the three guys who actually wrote Bloodhound, Andy, Rowan, and Waldo, uh, and, and Will, sorry. Uh, and actually one time that I gave that talk, Bloodhound from Red to Blue in DerbyCon, Andy and Rowan were sitting front row, right, behind, right in front of the stage. And uh, when I came out of the stage, Rowan actually told me that he learned something. I don't know if you can imagine the feeling of having the creator of a tool telling you that you learned something during your talk, but that was an awesome feeling. At some point, uh, also at Black Hat, I actually had almost my entire Twitter feed around me and we were all drinking beers. These are the type of things that I do not believe uh, would have been possible if I didn't uh, start going to those smaller conferences and uh, meeting all of these people. And I don't think I would have been able to go to those conferences if I was not a speaker. I'm not sure my, my enterprise wouldn't have sent me everywhere like that uh, during that year. Now we're going to talk about running the tool for a second time. So I changed corporation and during my uh, interview, hiring interview or hiring process, I was talking with the hiring manager uh, about my experience with Bloodhound and I, I thought it would actually help them. And uh, the, the role was a stock director, but still very technical. And uh, he said, yeah, it looks like a great idea. I got the job, I got in, and then this happened again. Because as you probably know, large enterprise don't like to take risks. Feel like a deja vu? It certainly did. Turned out that someone from the red team actually compromised a active directory in, uh, in a remote location and uh, used a tool very similar to Bloodhound or maybe even Bloodhound to uh, uh, achieve his action and objective and extract all the data and exfiltrate, I should say, the data that, uh, that was the target. So that put a lot of visibility on the Active Directory. And I was told, do not do anything uh, on the Active Directory. 
and strong from my previous um, experience where I was actually detected and uh, slapped on the wrist, I decided that I would uh, be very patient until I got the green light, which finally came roughly six months after. And again, uh, with the, this new type of data, this new structure, uh, I improved my Cypher query skills. I created some new interesting ciphers and I, I, I pushed that a little bit. Now come 2020. Um, and I think it's a very great thing that uh, Deadpool actually wears a mask every time he goes outside. Apparently, I didn't learn because, again, this year I submitted two talks. One was a workshop on Cypher and the second one was Bluehound, so this talk. And guess what? They both were accepted again and I spent most of my summer uh, building the proof of concept for Bluehound. Um, when I started coding Bluehound, I had zero, zero coding experience. Last time I, I coded was when I was in school, and as you can see, I have some gray hairs, uh, so I'm not that young. School was a very long time ago, so I was faced with the choice of a language. So I could choose, my first thought was I should go with Go, uh, because it's a new language, modern, and if I'm to learn a language, might as well learn something new. Then I heard lots of things about Rust, so I start looking into the difference between Go and Rust. And of course, Python is kind of an obvious choice when you're in security. Seems like 95% of all the tools that uh, are released are in Python. So I started with Go, and uh, you can maybe imagine that when you don't know anything and you need to Google to do an output on the screen. Uh, that's a lot of compilation, lots of changes, lots of trial and error, and it was just extremely difficult uh, in Go. So I decided to choose with Python. And why Python? Well, because there's no compilation. You just save your, your text file and you can run it. There's even an interpreter, so you can just type Python and then you can input comments right in there in that interpreter. And that was extremely useful when I started working with Neo4j result, query results. Um, and there was two library for um, interacting with Neo4j. For those who might not know, Neo4j is the graph database where Bloodhound stores its data. Um, so I starting uh, to code the proof of concept, uh, as I mentioned this summer, and uh, my code was crashing all the time, and it was crashing at random. So I would run the tool the first time and it go maybe 22 times and then crash, 22 paths, and then it crashed. Then I run it again, then it would go to 35 paths and it would crash. And then I run it again and go through five, and then you, you get the idea. So there is no regularity, it was just crashing anywhere. I didn't find any patterns. Uh, so I went to some friends of mine uh, which knew Python a lot better than myself. And when they looked at the error message, they said, my friend, the problem is in your library. You should do a PR in for the library. But that was way above my pay grade. Um, so I was a bit like this when they told me that. And uh, for those who might be offended, don't uh, forget that for Deadpool, this is pretty much the equivalent of taking a little nap. Um, and each time I, I the, the, the code crashed, I lost a part of my database as well. If the, if the crash happened between the time I deleted the relationship and the time I added them, it was just start eating my database. Of course, I could add the, I could re-import the data, but that was less than ideal. So the solution uh, as I mentioned, there's two library for Neo4j, so I used the other library for the main loop and the, 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 ne the pi to neo for all the function, uh, because pi to neo gives you a lot more controls and a lot of interesting uh, functions over the regular one from the Neo4j team. But it's a one-man project, so when it crashed like I have, uh, well, you have to wait until a guy has time to fix it. Uh, to help you. I was not very happy when I when I took it back after and the, 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 the talk was accepted. 
uh, I was not very happy with, with that fact that it, that it was not very performant to delete and create relationship all the time and going through the, the database like that. So I started thinking there must be a way in Cypher to um, kind of remove or filter out, would be the right term, a relationship in a path and test the path. So I, I tried uh, building something and then I went to the Slack, uh, Neo4j Slack server, and I started talking with a guy and uh, with my explanation and the test, we did some tests. And this is the Ninja Cypher query that came out of these discussion. And that guy has like 95% of the credit of that query, of course. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Cypher, but I haven't seen many queries that are 10 lines long in my life. Unfortunately, right now, I don't really have the time to go through this whole, uh, these 10 lines of code, but uh, I have a very good Cypher workshop if you're interested in learning Cypher. Uh, and that suffice to say that what it does, it, it's exactly the same thing as my methodology, meaning that it's gonna filter out one relationship and test if there is a path, and it's gonna tell you uh, each of the relationship that you can remove in that path that will actually break the path. Now enters Plum Hound. Very soon after my talk was accepted uh, to present at, uh, at a conference and I published that on Twitter, Kent Eichler from uh, Defensive Origin, a sister company of Black Hill Security that you're probably familiar with, uh, reached out to me uh, asking if I wanted to combine our two projects together. At first, I was like, didn't feel very right to present a tool that I didn't build to an audience, especially that the, in the CFP, I said that it was my tool. Um, so I said, told him, you know what, I'm gonna make my thing, I'm gonna present it, and then when the presentation is done, uh, we'll see what we can do. Then I started looking into the, his code um, and, uh, well, it was quite impressive. I mean, my code looks like it was written by a three years old. And I should know because I have a three years old at home. Uh, his code was using functions and a lot of things. So I thought that it would be a bit stupid of me and, and to uh, not use this for some part because it was already built. So today, that's why I did I announced that Bluehound and Plumhound are a lot better together and that Bluehound is now a module of Plumhound. So all the reporting is handled by Plumhound and the path findings and the path analysis is uh, handled by Bluehound, the module. And now it is time to do a demo of the tool, the part that everybody likes. So just before we go, I just want to bring you back to this uh, image. This is the exact same one, just so you have it in mind when we go through and you understand what we are uh, talking about. So first of all, there is the AP switch or the analyze path switch. This is the function that used the Ninja Cypher query that I presented. There's two ways of using it. You can use a label and currently the label or the type of nodes that are supported by the tool are user, group, and computer. So you just type this and it's going to look at all the user that have a path to domain admin or the groups or the computer. If you have a very big database, I suggest you start with groups because if there's less, usually less group than user, obviously. And same thing for computers. If you have a smaller database, you can start with the user, there's no problem. Or you can also specify which target and destination you want to analyze because it's not everybody that always want to go to domain admin. You might want to go somewhere else. Maybe you want to be backup operators. Maybe in the corporation there's one group that is very important or maybe your mission is to protect the uh, CEO or something like that. And you want to know if there is a path from you to become a CEO because you want to read his mail or you want to prevent anyone from reading his email. So when you run the tool, it will look something like this. 
So you'll see the pet that is analyzed. The first one is Kayla Femina and Domain Admin. And then it will tell you all the relationships that you can remediate in order to break the path between those two objects. If we look at the first two ones, we saw that member of, it might not be practical in your environment to actually remove membership either from a user within a group or a group to a group. So the first two one might not be the one that we are actually looking for. RDP. Now, is it normal that IT Group 363 has RDP access to the computer 959? Maybe it is, maybe it's not. This might be a better option for us. And then there's a session uh, between user cbarna and computer 959. If cbarna is a domain admin, and it probably is because it seems to be one of the latest uh, thing in the path, uh, and computer 959 is not a domain controller, this might be a, a policy problem that you have in your environment because your domain admins should not connect to anything else than a domain controller. So this might be a path. So I would argue, depending on what those user and machines are, that the last two are probably where you want to actually uh, remediate the path. Just last week, I released a new function, which is the BP switch or busiest path analysis. And the way it works is that it will take um, the shortest path that we saw or all shortest paths, which is a lot longer to calculate. And it will, and you give them how many you want. So I'll, I'll, I'll rewind a little bit. You do short, shortest path and it's going to count all the user in that path allowing you to find the busiest path, what we talked about. If you have very limited resources or if you're in a large enterprise, you probably want to focus your energy on the path that will give you uh, the most return for your time invested, that will improve your security posture the most. So the integer is how many you want. So the last one uh, would return the five busiest path, if you will, and the first one, the first, the, the path with the most user. Now, the output looks like this. Um, so it will give you, as I said, the, the path and it gives you the starting node uh, of that path. Now, I don't have anything to say here. I just put that slide because I like the image and I wanted to take a sip of water. Now, the X switch, and that's what was built in in um, Plumhound before, well, before, that's the origin that was from Plumhound and not from Bluehound. So X run task and tasks are uh, a list of queries that you want to run. So here it's how it's work. When you run the dash X, you're gonna build the task list. It's gonna start the input and then it's gonna uh, create the output of the second one and all of the query in your, um, in your task file. As you can see here, number of user, uh, DA session to non-DC. And I honestly think that this is muy bueno and I have like two minutes left, so I'm gonna uh, expedite this thing. This is the format for the um, task format. So everything in brackets, there is four field, the domain name, the format, it supports HTML and CSV, uh, the file name output, and then the query. This query is extremely simple. I just needed something that fitted in the screen. This actually just count the number of user. Did you see how easy that was to create a report? And that's why I said it was a bit stupid on my part if I didn't leverage that. Now, uh, the query that were added in Plumhound, they're here. Uh, domain admin session to non DC. This is uh, pretty much my signature query. Uh, all the ones that start with DU are about domain user, and the other one with curb are for curb roastable user. Now, if you want to get the hound, if you want to kick the tire of those projects, of course, the mother project is Bloodhound AD slash Bloodhound. Plumhound can be found at the following address. And if you want to see my older code with the delete and addition, I kept it as a reference for myself mainly in Scooby slash Bluehound, uh, but it's not going to be maintained anymore. All the new things will go straight into the Plumhound repo. So as you can see, this year, I was able to deliver both the workshop and the talk. And with that, it concludes our talk for today. Um, 
If you need more information or help, you can always join the Bloodhound Slack. There is a Cypher Query channel where I'm very active and I created a Plumhound channel. So if you have specific question about Plumhound, please join that channel and here's the link. Otherwise, I'm also always or very often on the Blue Team Village Discord and this is the way to join it if you haven't already. Um, and of course, uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, my DMs are currently open. Uh, you can reach me at ScoobyMTL. Thank you very much and have a great gray hat. Thank you, everybody.